Hi, welcome to a video tutorial from Robojax. In this video, we are going to have this reversing aid project that is attached and it will tell you the distance from the obstacle and also the beep will change accordingly. If there is an obstacle, it will beep faster depending on the distance. Two seconds. This is now one second and so it becomes very So less than, this is about 10 centimeter. More than 10, it will start beeping. Let's get started with this. ESP32 starter kit from SunFounder. This is the best ESP32 learning kit from SunFounder. It has this ESP32 microcontroller, which has built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth. This board can do everything Arduino Uno can do or many other Arduinos can do, plus extra more features. Because we have Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, the possibilities are endless. You can get connected to the cloud or do the control or read information or values via your mobile device or your desktop or over the cloud from a far location. It comes with a camera extension kit where you can stream the video over Wi-Fi either through the cloud or to your network and also it comes with micro SD card where you can save uh, images on the micro SD card or you can write from the device any information, log the information on the device and read it back. You can power the board using this included 18650 lithium battery and it has built-in charger where you can connect micro USB and charge the battery. The kit comes with 320 pieces of component that you can learn tons of projects. Come to this page docs.sunfounder.com scroll down until you see ESP32 then click on ESP32 Starter Kit Main. On the left side, click on Arduino User. After that, scroll down to 6.3, Reversing Aid. This is the documentation page for today's lesson. And I talk how we are using uh, ultrasonic sensor and LCD screen and a buzzer to inform us. I'm going to talk about all this. We are using the ESP32. We are going to use ESP32 and optionally you can use also ESP32 extension board which has a battery and charger built in when the wires will be very secured. We are going to use the LCD screen. We are going to use the ultrasonic distance sensor. We are going to use the buzzer and also there is a transistor. All these components are part of SunFounder's learning kit the link to purchase it is below the video in the description and here is a schematic for the project for the lcd we are using two pins 21 22 and then for the buzzer we are using pin 14 and then for ultrasonic sensor we use pin 25 26 and here is the actual wiring diagram which i'm going to show you step by step and this is the code for the project which I am going to explain it fully and there is an explanation for the code if you want to have a look at it. On any of these items if you click you can get further information for example if I click on ultrasonic sensor here it has been fully explained which I have explained it in separate lesson and how it works where one of them will send a pulse and it hits the object and the other will uh, and the signal will come back to the receiver and we are measuring the time that the signal traveled. When you use ESP32 with SunFounder's ESP32 camera extension module like this, it comes also with a battery on the package and it comes a built-in charger so you can connect it and charge it and disconnect and later on you can use it with a lot of power so you can power up your application very easily. This is the wiring diagram and here is a schematic with, in, with the symbols but we are going to refer to both. First we will start with this uh, buzzer. And I've measured the current that this buzzer needs to consume from this ESP32 and 
هر لس هوا لکدت And here, if you want to know the amount of current from EFP32, this is a data sheet for EFP32. So when you set the current for 3.3 volts, when you set it to high, the maximum, the typical is 40 milliampere. So that's huge amount of current. This is when it is high. If you want to set it to low, then it will be maximum uh, at 28 milliampere. Now I'm going to show you the amount of current that this buzzer needs. I've connected it to 3.3 volts. First, let me show you the voltage. This is negative and that's a positive. So let's see the voltage first. First, 3.28 volts. So that's 3.3 volts. I'm connecting the negative to the negative and then this positive to the buzzer and let's read the volt the current so it's around 15 milliampere and it is safe to use it with ESP32 to turn it on from the pens if we have only one of this it will be okay there is no harm for ESP32 to turn the buzzer on because we measured it and it is around 16 milliampere so it needs only 16 milliampere. It's safe to use it directly, but I'm going to show you also with the transistor in case somebody is thinking differently. The longer pin, the side that has positive, just insert it somewhere in here. And from once you insert it, the pins that are within the boundary or the pins, this is not this is not but this is the left pin the negative and the positive is here so from the left side get an orange wire and connect it somewhere to the left like this and then we will get this transistor 8050 that comes with a kit uh, and insert it such that the right pin is connected to the to the line that the wire is like this, so they are on the same line. Uh, get the one kilo ohm resistor, uh, bend it, and from the middle pin, and from the middle pin, just move it to somewhere. From the middle, connect one side to the middle, the other side just connect it to the left or somewhere like that get a short black wire from the left pin of transistor we're going to set this blue as our ground and this red as our 5 volts so I'm connecting the left pin of transistor to the ground anywhere on the blue that's fine and here I forgot to connect the buzzer the right side of the buzzer with a red wire to positive Now let's go with the ultrasonic sensor. Let's insert an ultrasonic sensor here. Insert it such that we have room for the holes. If I insert it at the last portion in here, not beyond this line, it should be this side. Now this is ready. We need two wires one for the power supply the left pin so we have four four pins the last pin which labels vcc connected to the red line anywhere i'm connecting it here a short black wire and from the right pin which says gnd or ground in here now we have two pin left two pins left connected in here this portion is done. Uh, I'm going to connect the wires later. And for the LCD, from the top, if I turn it around, this is ground and then VCC. Here, at the, if I look at it from the top, according to this diagram, white, the first one is ground. I'm connecting it to the ground here. 
to the blue line, and the second pin, gray, is VCC. I'm going to connect it to 5 volts. Now, this portion is done. Now we need wires to the board. And here I've connected all these 5 wires. This is 5 volts, and then ground, because this is very secure here. And then I've connected these 3 wires, and they are connected to pin 14, 25, and 26. Now let's start with, uh, with, let's start with 5 volts on ground, the red and black. I'm connecting the red on the red line anywhere that I prefer, and black somewhere on the ground. That's done. And here, the yellow, this, Trans from, from this resistor, it goes to pin 14, this wire. So from the resistor, which was just hanging, not connected that portion, now this goes to pin 14. And here, you can connect it to pin 14 to this terminal. Or if you're using your ESP32, connect it directly to pin 14 in here. Just use, use a female connector. And now we have the left pin is track pin. It's connected to pin 26. So the track is connected using green wire to pin 26. Here I connected it to the track pin and then this side is connected to pin 26. And then now I'm going to connect echo to pin 25, this other pin. So 25 is the white one. I'm going to connect it to echo pin, which is uh, one empty pin here. The and then the last one is the LCD. So we are connecting SDA from the top. Second one is SDA and this is SCL. SCA is purple. Get the purple and connect it to pin 21. 21 is here, the fifth pin, and pin 22 is the second pin here. Purple goes to pin 21, the SDA, and SCL goes to pin 22 in here, and I'm going to secure it. Guys, believe me, this is amazing. I, I have done a lot of videos, over six, seven hundred videos. In every project, when you move something, the wires just get disconnected. This is amazing. This makes it very easy to use. I'm opening Arduino IDE. Let's open our project by clicking on File, Open. On the left side, click on Downloads, then ESP32 Starter Kit Main on the right side. Double click to open it, double click on C, double click on Codes, and scroll down to 6.3, Reversing 8, double click on this folder to open it, and 6.3 Reversing 8, the file selected, click Open to open it. We are including here the i square t library, the wire library, and then this is for liquid crystal I2C library, which I've explained it in separate video. Please watch that video. And then we are defining echo pin for pin 25 and track pin for pin 26 of type integer and constant, so the value cannot change. We are defining a pin for buzzer, buzzer pin of type integer and constant. And here the interval for measurement or the, uh, we have defined this variable for interval, intervals of type long because this is measuring if the distance is too long. This is for microsecond and it's of type long and unsigned because we know it will never be negative. And this is also previous milles. This is for measuring the millisecond time of type long. 
of type long and unsigned. We are, defi we are defining another variable called distance with the initial value of zero of type float so that when we are measuring it, this will be updated. This will be also updated, updated, but these constant cannot be updated and they are just constant as the name says. And then this from the library of liquid crystal, we create an object called, called LCD. You can write RoboJax or SunFounder. And this is the address for the I square C module for this LCD. I've explained it before. This 16 means 16 character and then two means two line. So 16 character and then one, two, two lines. Inside the setup, we initialize the serial. The setup starts from here and ends here, and the code that is inside it will run only once. So we initialize the serial monitor with 115,200. And then using pen mode, we set the echo pen as input. And using pen mode, we set the track pen, which we defined at the top of the code as output. This is for ultrasonic. And then for the buzzer, we use pen mode, buzzer pen as output, so we can turn on the buzzer. So we are initializing using that object that we created here. We are initializing the, seria, the, LC, the LCD, and then we are clearing the screen. When you turn it on, sometimes some characters might appear, and then we turn on the backlight using lcd.backlight. Now we go inside the loop, which runs continuously. It's up to here. First, we call this function called read distance. This is a function which is at the bottom of the code. Let's have a look at it. And here, so we, uh, this is how we measure. I've explained it in an original lesson, but using digital write, we set the track pen to low, and then, we, and then we are delaying for two microseconds. And using digital write, we set the track pen to high. And then for 10 microseconds, we are sending signal. And now using track pen, we set it to low. Using this pulse n, echo pen high. So we set the echo pen to measure the time. And the time is stored in this variable called microsecond. And in this line, we are dividing that microsecond by 29 to convert it to centimeter. And then we divide it by 2 to get half of the distance because the wave goes uh, from the device to the object and coming back. So we need half of it. And the result of this calculation is stored in a variable called distance. And this return will return this value. Now, when we say return, it comes back here. So this, was, this went and did the calculation, and it came back. Now this is a distance, a variable a number and it's stored in a variable called distance. Now we check the distance. If the distance, if this distance is less than or equal 10 centimeter, then we set the intervals, which is for the buzzer, 100. Else if, if the distance is less than 20, we make it 500. And if the distance is less than or greater than 50, it will be 1,000. So initially, if it's less than 10, it will fall into this category. Else, it will go here. At the end, else, it's 2,000. So the beep intervals will be further away. And here, we remember the current time of execution. Something, uh, there is a function called MELES. I have a separate video explaining that MELES. If you want to watch it, the link is below the video. Then we remember the current time called current MELES of type long, and it's unsigned. And here we check if the current MELES is minus previous MELES. Now, the previous MELES is initially 0, but later on it will be updated. So the, the result of this calculation, the current MELES is always higher, because the, as the program runs, this number increases. So we are subtracting from higher number the smaller number. And the result, if it's greater than interval that we calculate in here, then we print the beeping on the screen. And we run this function called beep. And also, uh, so let's have a look at the beep. Beep is a function here. 
It comes and turns using digital ray, the buzzer pin high, the buzzer is buzzing, and 100 millisecond delay, and using digital ray, buzzer pin low, so the buzzer will be turned off. Now we come back. After the buzzer buzzes, then we replace it the previous time with the current time that we measured uh, this mellis. So now this value will be updated. And this was done. Now this, this, this line is all for the LCD. We clear the screen from the previous value. We set the cursor at the <coughs> car, uh, character 0, line 0. And then we print this text, this on the screen, and then we print the actual distance. And after the space, with a little space, we print the cm or centimeter so we can see it. And then we set this 100 millisecond delay, and the loop will continue repeating all these tasks over again. Now let's see how we can select the ESP32 board. We can click here under the select board and type here ESP32 DEV. As soon as you type dev, you will see dev board. You can select it and click OK. So the board have been selected. Now we have to select the port. The, the other way to select the board is click on Tools, Board, ESP32, and select the ESP32 Dev module. Now we have to select the port. If I click here, it shows two ports, and I don't know which one belongs to my device. Sometimes you will see you will not see the number properly. So the best way to be sure, the right click on the Start menu, go to the Device Manager. And you will see here the ports. If I click on this arrow, it will show me the ports. One is USB serial CH340, one the other is USB serial device. And here now it's connected. If I disconnect this, one of them disappear. The one that disappeared is my board. So six stays and eight disappeared. If I connect it. So 8 is my COM port, CH340. Now 8 is my COM port and I can select it. Or I can click on Tool, Port, and here you will see it. You can select whichever you want. Ours is COM8. Now we have successfully selected the board and the port. And this is very important. It must be done first. Now the code is ready. Click to upload it. Let's open the serial monitor. I've disconnected the wire, but it says beeping. If you don't see this text, uh, let's pay attention here. This number 115,200, this number must match here on the serial monitor. For example, if you select 9,600, you will have an unreadable characters. Select this so it matches this number, and then you will be able to read. The demonstration, the code have been loaded. Everything is ready. Let me turn on. I've connected the battery, so I'm turning it on. The project is functioning, and it shows the distance here, about 10 centimeters, because it's leaning. Let me point it up. Then it shows 57 centimeters, or 60, 70. So any distance, it will be continuously it will have beep. Anything greater than 50 will have two seconds beep. Now, if I bring my hand here, it will be every one second. And the beep will speed up. One second. Still not less than 50. And greater than 50 will be two seconds. Because the now I'm pointing it to the sky, so it says 221 centimeter, and if it's 221 or greater than 50, it has two second intervals. And if I bring my hand here, so the beep starts speeding. If less than 10, it, it beeps more.
the project is prepared and ready and we are going to test it and here is the demonstration i've just temporarily installed it on the car that's a wall let me show you uh, the project shows the distance 188 centimeters and i have attached it with a tape just for demonstration purpose and for the camera i put this so you can read it and this is the wall and at the moment it's 188.6 or 189 centimeter as you can see the beep will be every 2000 millisecond or two second then if the distance is 150 or closer it will be half a second and then if it's equal or less than 80 centimeter it will be almost three times or 300 millisecond and if it's less than 50 it will be a lot of beeps like continuous And here the distance is above 180, as soon as it reaches 180, the beep starts and then anything less than 150, the beep changes now. I stopped it so you can see it, we're closer and we're waiting to reach 80 centimeter. Still the beep is different and less than 80 the beep changed significantly now but we cannot go further because it's uh, the sensor is at the top and now i'm just waiting for you to see it and then let's go forward back i'm going forward and just pay until it's 150 and you will see the beep will change and i will stop so the beep now changed 